Let's talk about SID. What's SID? Yeah, it's uh, a basic initiative, as you say, that came out of the 2002 World Summit. It was an idea that uh, there are a lot of small, even micro businesses out there uh, doing very interesting things, but right. uh, they need a partner. They need somebody to assist them on simple stuff like marketing, right. uh, even just accountancy, um, advertising, whatever it might be, to sort of guide them, support them, assist them through those stages of the early uh, growth uh, pangs. Yeah. And that is what Seed does. It gives a prize, but it also gives some money to those winning uh, companies from around the world to assist them to develop their business model. Yeah, so apart from uh, you know putting South Africa on the map, the World uh, Summit on a Sustainable Development in 2002, I do remember I was here that yep. uh, did bring something, so it came out of it. But in terms of uh, growing this sector, just how active have been governments in trying to come up with the right policies to try and generate uh, business development around the green economy? Well, the green economy as a concept, in a yeah. sense, burst on the stage in about 2008 at the, the height of the economic and financial crisis. Yeah. Uh, UNEP, uh, my organization, was very instrumental in that because we were trying to see how could you actually implement sustainable development. We've had that term around for ages. 1992, Absolutely. the Earth Summit in Rio, uh, 2002 here in Johannesburg. But while there has been some progress on this, it's been very patchy, it's been quite theoretical in some cases. What, what are some of the missing ingredients? Yeah. And part of that is the economics. Uh, and part of that is because a lot of the economics of the environment have been almost invisible in the profits and, and loss of countries, communities and companies. You know, you can chop all your trees down yeah. and it's a positive hit on your GDP because you've got logs to sell. But the actual services the forest provides, which can be multi-trillion dollar, multi-million yeah. dollar services, yeah. aren't captured in the economics. So in a sense, the green economy and how that has been developing is trying to bring that sense that there is wider value in the world, yeah. there's a wider definition of wealth, and trying to create economies that not only keep with, uh, the humanity within planetary boundaries, yeah. but also generate decent kinds of employment. Because a lot of the growth that we've seen around the world in the last few years has lifted millions out of poverty in places like China and, and elsewhere. Yeah. But it's come at a very high cost to the environmental services upon which we all depend. Right. And job-wise, a lot of people have jobs which maybe aren't as decent as they could be. Yeah. So the argument for it is quite strong. Yep. But is there a realization on the ground? Let's begin first, as I said, mm. on the government, at the government level. Are you seeing policies that are coming into play that foster an understanding and an appreciation of the issues that you've just read? And secondly, yep. within the business sector itself mm. and the ordinary person, are mm. you beginning to get that awareness as well that this is the way we ought to be thinking? Or is it this just a fad of the mm. rich, you know, who think about organic sure. stuff and is all that? Is it the emperor's new green clothes? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, yeah. I mean, let, let me point to, the, to a figure, an interesting figure that were, came out last year, yeah. uh, which was an assessment on the amount of uh, investment in renewable energy around the world in 2010. Two years after the economic and financial crisis, many people expected that renewable energy investments would go down. Mm. They actually went up 32%, $211 billion invested in new renewable energies around the world, more than in new fossil fuel industry. Yeah. I mean, China obviously out there uh, very fast, but Africa is showing a growth of over 105%. And by 2010, about $5 billion being invested right. in renewable energy in okay. Africa. Okay. Now, of course, that is moving on very fast right now. Sure. I see only this week that Standard Charter in South Africa was talking about increasing its investment of renewables in South Africa to, what, $3.5 billion, something like that. Yeah. This very week in Kenya, the largest wind farm in sub-Saharan Africa was given the green light okay. in one of the poorest parts of Kenya, up in Takana. There have been challenges with that because one of the big challenges there was who would pay for the interconnector to get right. it to the grid. That right. delayed it. So there are challenges. But you're seeing many, many um, sectors and many countries within Africa and beyond yeah. embracing parts of the green economy. Yeah. The question is, how do you bring it all together Absolutely. and how do you actually scale it up? I must mention, of course, that here in South Africa, we cannot talk about what ESCOM is doing around Kusil and all these other power plants that are supposed to come into play. But then, of course, at the same time, you've got the government yeah. speaking about nuclear energy as an alternative and the yeah. amounts we're talking about here. But, Absolutely. you know, it's a very interesting question you raise. Yeah, it's a very interesting, interesting question you raise on the, the, the nuclear story and the coal story. Yeah. Because, you know, some people say, well, what is a green economy? One of the reasons that South Africa is looking very closely right now at solar power may not be for climate change. It may be for getting electrification to rural it areas. It makes sense. But one thing that is not factored into that equation but is being factored in by the government here is the water issue. You're at your maximum exploitation of water resources right now. More coal-fired power stations, more yeah. nuclear power stations need yeah. water to cool them. 
Whereas, you know, solar voltaics, right? Big ones. Yeah. You just have to wash them with a bit of water to make them clean. That's your, your, right. your water demand is Zippo. Right, there are different reasons why you go for a green economy. Yeah, yeah it's much yeah. more interesting than just uh, you know simply being green. It's about the different sectors you have and how you rely on certain natural resources to to fuel your economy. Yeah, but Africa has two challenges, doesn't it? Because at the same time, you've got you know you know, we, we, we so, so we've got these other resources that we want to use, yeah. but now we're being told we can't use them because you know what you're polluting the environment and all those other kind of things. But we could go into that argument yes. and argue till the, all the cars come home. Yeah. But no, let's talk about the small business sector mm -hmm. and the particular impediments it faces in trying to understand and implement green uh, policies that support uh, renewable uh, mm -hmm. efforts and all these other kind of things. Mm -hmm. how, how can they, given the difficulties, number mm -hmm. one, lack of funding, secondly, technology mm -hmm. that's not available? Mm -hmm. Well, I think in many cases, um, you know, why they're interesting in these small businesses is the sheer creativity that people show in, real, in times of real difficulty and hardship. I think the governments and the banks have a huge responsibility to assist. I think there are lots of models and lessons from all around the world that show how, for example, microfinance, the Grameen banking system in Bangladesh, for example, which has allowed uh, women in, in villages to actually access uh, uh, solar voltaics, for example. One of the winners that we'll be talking about tomorrow is from Uganda. They're called the Solar Sisters. It's basically a door-to-door -door sales operation by women in Uganda selling solar lanterns. They're doing very well. They've needed some marketing assistance. They're now selling them in South Sudan, and they're now selling them uh, in Rwanda as well. It's a small business that is solving community problems. But if you scale those up across the world, yeah. you have some of the answers to some of the problems we're facing in terms of a sustainable 21st century. Let's look at the bigger picture, not to okay. focus too much on the uh, small issues. Thanks very much, Nick Natal, United Nations Environment Programme.